OK. All right. Um, so again, if we're going to follow the form, and when we're doing standard form, the first thing I showed you guys is do A, B, and C, right? And again, if you follow those process, I know you guys are like, oh, well, this is so easy. I don't like, that's the easy thing. I can easily do that. Um, oops, x, h equals 1, and k equals 0. But I think it's very helpful to make sure you guys understand, hey, there's no k here, right? So k doesn't equal 1. If k equals 1, it would look like that, right? So there's no k, so it has to be 0. All right. Remember, h is always going to be the opposite. Because remember, it's x minus h. So here I'm doing x minus 1. So h is equal to 1. And then here I have a equals is 2 thirds. So this is very important because we have to make sure that we understand. All right, now our graph is going to be transformed, right? It's going to be um, either stretched or compressed. So, and also a is negative. So we know we're going to, we know the graph is going to open down, right? It's going to be reflected over the x axis. And is the absolute value is absolute value of negative two thirds is just two thirds. Is two thirds less than one or greater than one? Less than one. Since that's less than one, it's going to be horizontal stretch. All right, you guys have notes. You guys don't have to write down these transformations unless they're asked for them. But I think when you guys are learning and trying to do them, to write them down is pretty helpful to kind of like remember everything. Um, so we know the vertex. Vertex in this case is going to be hk, which is 1, 0. You could write in the axis of symmetry is x equals 1, x equals h, which is just 1 here. So let's go ahead and graph what we know so far. Well, I know my vertex is 1, 0, so that's going to go right there. And I know my graph opens down. However, I can't use the parent graph like I did last one, last problem. Remember last problem, I just said, hey, just use the parent graph, over 1, up 1, right? Well, I can't say over 1, down 1, because now I have this compression. So when you have a problem like this, to get started, the easiest way to kind of understand them is to, again, go back to a table of values. Now again, just like the standard form, we don't need to choose a million values. We just want to choose values to the left and to the right. And I always want to choose values that are going to be right next to, um, right next to my axis of symmetry and towards 0. So the two values that I'm going to choose are 0 and I'm going to choose negative 1. I'm going to choose them on the same side. I'm going to choose 0 and negative 1. Yes? Does it really matter as long as left? You can choose right ones or left ones. Yeah. Just to make sure that you. Not the y axis. You could. What? Not on the y axis. You could. Well, no, we're, we're choosing, I'm choosing 0, which is on the y-axis. So I'm just choosing two values. I'm choosing so what? Nope, no, it does not matter which points you choose. I'm choosing 0 and negative 1. If you want to choose two points on the right, you can choose two points on the right. It doesn't really matter which points you choose. But I think to make it easy is choose points that are close to the axis symmetry and that are towards 0. Just through my experiences, those are the best numbers to choose. So let's go ahead and figure them out. You don't necessarily need two numbers, but you can use three numbers. I'm just trying to make, I'm just trying to make that recommendation as two numbers would give you a good idea what the quadratic is going to look like. If you only choose one number, that's kind of hard to draw a quadratic with like just one number in the vertex. Three numbers would be better. Four, five, six, eight numbers would be the best, you know, or many numbers. But I don't want you guys to be spending all day making a table of eight numbers. So I'm just, re I'm just asking you guys to do two numbers. So now let's do 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is uh, positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 2 thirds is a negative 2 thirds. So at 0, I go down negative 2 thirds, which is roughly 0.6666 repeating, right? Sheldon, can you flip it over again for the like, third time today? y equals, now let's do negative 1, negative 2 thirds times negative 1 minus 1 squared. So if you owe me a dollar and you borrow another dollar, you now owe me $2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. y equals um, negative 2 thirds times 4. Again, write that as a fraction. So you have y equals negative 8 over 3. And again, guys, fractions, it's OK. How many times does 3 go into negative 8? 2 times with the remainder of 
2. So you could say that is the same thing as negative 2 and 2 thirds, or negative 2.666 repeating. So I know that's going to be between 2 and 3. So I go over negative 1 and down like this. All right. Now what's nice about choosing these two points, um, negative 8 thirds, is my axis symmetry we know is at 0. Now the two points to the right I'm choosing, remember this just gets reflected over, right? So the two points to the right would be 2 and 3. Well, and guess what? Their values are going to be exactly the same, 2 thirds and negative 8 thirds. So I just go ahead and plot those over there. And then there's my graph. It opens down, as well as there's the points, there's the vertex, and you're done. So the best thing, ladies and gentlemen, is when A equals 1, these problems are fairly